fixing the problem for everyone. Finally, a word on our approach to policy solutions. In the past, the analyses of racial disparities have tended to follow three-part formula. Binary, white, BAME distinction. The idea that all racial and ethnic disparities are negative. The idea that policy formulation should be focused on targeting aspects of minority disadvantage. However, as previously noted, we think that with some exceptions, the best and fairest way to address disparities is to make improvements that will benefit everyone, targeting interventions based on need, not ethnicity. If not enough black people are getting the professional jobs they expected after graduating, then we need to examine the subjects they are studying and the careers advice they are receiving. If you improve the careers service for everyone, then all groups will benefit. This approach is not only seen to be fair, it would be more effective than diversity training for teachers. Similarly, if diversity and inclusion training is only focused on white discrimination, this risks alienating the very people whose behaviour may need to change. The Commission wants inclusive workspaces, but training which focuses narrowly on behaviour around race can run counter to that. Far better to focus on the biases, nepotism, in-group favouritism and motivated reasoning that people of all races are susceptible to. The Commission does, however, recognise the role that diversity and inclusion training has had in moving the dial and creating a space for conversations in organisations to redress actual and perceived discrimination. It is important to build on this, while focusing on interventions that produce concrete outcomes. The model for this aim-at-everyone approach is spelled out in a paper Diversity is Important, Diversity-Related Training is Terrible by Musa Al-Ghabi. Diversity training, according to Al-Ghabi, should not be focused on avoiding and policing misunderstandings or conflict, but on helping people build relationships and collaborate despite inevitable disagreements, and so on leveraging divergent perspectives in order to advance collective goals. The same might be said for the UK's entire race conversation. In that vein, this report takes an optimization rather than a maximization approach to group inequality. That is, rather than judging success by how far society can maximize minority outcomes, even at the expense of discriminating against majorities, it moves to a balanced outlook that seeks to optimize outcomes across all groups and dimensions in society. This also means that an open climate of debate must be encouraged, in which it is as legitimate to question explanations based on discrimination as it is to make them. In a sporting match, we care about penalties, but we also care about referees who call too many fouls, or players who claim they have been fouled when they have not been. Equality's policy has traditionally focused on giving additional help to historically marginalised groups. This made sense when ethnic minorities were heavily disadvantaged in all spheres, and virtually all prejudice came from white people. Yet times have changed, and the picture as we show is now more complex. Some ethnic minority groups are doing better on average than white people. Discrimination in favour of one group, as with the use of quotas, would mean discrimination against other groups. It is hard to see how this would foster a more unified and fair society that all groups could trust. Meanwhile, new innovations like name-blind CVs, using more diverse recruitment channels to identify candidates for jobs or family-friendly policies that enable more labour market participation for more ethnic minority women could make a practical difference that does not disadvantage any group. Another way of looking at the idea of fixing the problem for everyone is to look at ethnic minority participation in employment, health trials or top universities as the barometer for wider policies of fairness. Put simply, if we're getting it right for marginalised groups, then we're getting it right for the majority. One of the best examples of this has been the policy changes that have impacted comprehensive schools since the introduction of academies and schools becoming more self-managed entities. The pressure for this change came from the poor performance of London education authorities like Hackney and Southwark, where black students were underachieving at record levels. These boroughs led the successful pilots of academies, like Mossbourne School in Hackney, 
and so became the flagship for a wider UK take-up. We can see the same kind of change happening in the police force as a result of the Macpherson report. The message is clear. The ethnic minority experience is part of the whole. What works for a black boy in Brixton will work for a white girl in Barnsley.